Good morning, little masters, and welcome to today's Tolkien Times. I'm Alan, the man of the West, also from the Prancing Pony podcast, and the TTT is my way of bringing you a little Middle Earth every single day. Now, if you want even more content, please listen to the award-winning Prancing Pony podcast, now approaching the end of our seventh season. But let's get started today with Word Nerd Wednesday. Now, today we're going to take a look at a word that you think you know well, ranger. In Tolkien, of course, a ranger is, in the words of Gandalf, the last remnant in the north of the great people, the men of the west. So a ranger is also a Dunedain, a man of the west. But of course, it also means the kind of person who can wander in the wilderness, track animals, hunt and forage, and so on, none of which I can do. But let's look at the history of the word ranger, how Tolkien uses it, and interestingly, how it's come to be a part of the modern fantasy landscape. For this, I'm going to be leaning in part on the philology fair that Sean Marchese and I did on the Prancing Pony podcast back in episode 182, nearly three years ago. So head back there for more if you'd like. Now, if you take a look at the Oxford English Dictionary, you'll find that the word ranger appears very early in Middle English, going back as far as 1327, meaning, not surprisingly, someone who ranges, like a forester or gamekeeper. Now, shortly after that, it would also come to mean the warden of a forest, like what we think of today when we talk about a park ranger, or like what Yogi the Bear would think about when he's talking about a park ranger. Now, it came from the verb to range, which means to move or roam across a large area. Now, as you might guess from the sound of the word, it's not from Old English. It actually originated from a French verb, ranger, spelled the same way. And it could mean the same thing, though it could also mean to arrange soldiers in ranks. By the middle of the 1500s, though, it had also come to mean rover, wanderer, rake, a drifter, a vagabond, or a bum. And it seems to me that's what the people of Brie mean when they say the word ranger. But there's also another nuanced meaning of the word that started in the early days of the United States, a member of an organized group of armed men who range over a place to protect it, like the Texas Rangers, not the baseball team, the law enforcement agency, you know, the one that Chuck Norris made famous. Now, that Old West idea fits well with the idea of the rangers roaming around Eriador and the Shire, protecting those lands without the locals even realizing it. And we know from reading Tom Shippey's Road to Middle Earth and John Garth's The Worlds of J.R.R. Tolkien, that Tolkien was a bigger fan of stories of the Old West in his childhood than we might have guessed. Shippey talks about the influence of American author James Fenimore Cooper on Tolkien while Garth points out influences that are connected to the American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Now, it's reasonable to think that Tolkien may have had each of these things in mind, combining them all in a bit of wordplay, as he so often and so well does. Now, in Strider, we meet a ranger who is all three of these things at once. He's a wanderer, a shady drifter to the people of Bree, and even to the hobbits at first, but he's secretly an armed member of an elite group of warriors that are protecting the area. Simultaneously, he's very comfortable in the forest and the plains and can move over a wide area quickly with those long shanks of his. Later on, of course, we see Faramir's rangers doing all those exact same things, except for the shady drifter bit, unless you take Denethor's opinion. But the thing is, Tolkien seems to have been the first person to bring all of these concepts of the word ranger into one single character. And that character concept has continued on in fantasy games and books today. Much like Tolkien's, well, everything was the origin of concepts in fantasy games and books. Take Dungeons and Dragons, for example. Rangers appeared in D&D very early on. Rules for the D&D Ranger class were first published in the Strategic Review in 1975. Now, that was a newsletter published by TSR. They were the original publishers of D&D, and the newsletter was a predecessor to Dragon Magazine, which is something I recall reading back when I was first playing Dungeons & Dragons in the late 80s. Rangers were described as an exciting new class, but they're about as close to original as you can get. At the time, D&D itself was only a year old, and Joe Fisher, who invented the class and wrote that article, was just a guy in Gary Gygax's gaming group. Now, the first edition of the Player's Handbook in 1978 included Rangers, And we know they were inspired by Tolkien because in both the Strategic Review article and the first edition handbook, a second level ranger is called a strider. 
By the way, I owe a hat tip on this bit, not just to Sean, but to friend of the PPP and author of the Silmarillion Primer, Jeff LaSala, who we'll need to get on for a Fandom Friday one of these days. Now, that is it for today's Word Nerd Wednesday, but come back as we explore the wide, wild, wonderful world of words weekly on Wednesdays. <laughs> and if there's a word that you want to know more about, please let me know by emailing barnuman at theprancingponypodcast.com. For now, though, plan on joining me again tomorrow on today's Tolkien Times for Third Age Thursday. Please like and subscribe on YouTube and follow or subscribe on your podcast apps to make sure each episode gets downloaded to your device. Finally, follow at Tolkien Times on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And as Faramir says, go with the goodwill of all good men. <laughs>